Okay, so before we start, I'll just give everybody um, a little kind of heads up of what's going to happen. This is a little different than a normal council meeting. Uh, this is the first council committee of the whole meeting for the new council. So we have a little ceremonial things that will go before we actually start the council meeting. So here shortly, you'll see me uh, stand and I will say, uh, please stand for the presentation of the colors and the singing of the national anthem. Um, our central JROTC uh, color guard will present the colors in front of the dais. Our wonderful ladies from Central High School uh, Choir will sing the national anthem and then the presentation of the colors, they will exit. And then we will go through the swearing in. I will invite uh, Supreme Court Justice, Iowa Supreme Court Justice Waterman up behind uh, my spot here. Uh, he will swear me in and then we will go through the respective alder folks, uh, men and women, and he will swear them individually. This will take a little bit of time because as we do each individual, they will bring whatever family members they would like up to be part of the process, be part of the picture. There will some, be some pictures individually um, and then we'll go one through um, 10. Then after all of that is done, then we will go through the official meeting. Before we get to the official meeting, I will pause after all the swearing in is done and allow anybody who would like to uh, depart because, uh, um, but you're welcome to stay for the meeting if you like, but you, you will see that pause also. So that's kind of how we'll do things. All right, any, any, and, and I don't usually do this, but any questions? <laughs> okay, all right. So um, if everyone would please stand for the presentation of the colors and the singing of the nat national anthem by Army JRTC, uh, color guard from Davenport Central and two state singers um, and I will read their names Mia Roldan and Emily Wynn who are all state student singers from Davenport Central please post the colors mark time Mark. Left turn. Move. Color guard. Hold. Present. Arm. Another applause for the color guard and the national anthem. Everybody, please take their seats, and now we'll go through the swearing in ceremony. Slide my chair,
please raise your right hand and repeat after me. Uh, state your name. I, Mike Matson. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. And impartially. And impartially. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Discharge the duties of office of mayor. Discharge the duties of the office of mayor. Of the city of Davenport. Of the County of Scott, State of Iowa. Of the City of Davenport, County of Scott, State of Iowa. As now or hereafter required by law. As now or hereafter required by law. Thank you for serving. Thank you, sir. <coughs> right, let's get a picture. Picture. Oh, oh sorry. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> Good, thank you. All right. Okay, all the way done. Please. And any respective family members. Sorry, you're giving us an order ready to go. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I do say your name. I Rick Dunn. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. The Constitution of the State of Iowa. And that I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. And impartially. And impartially. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Discharge the duties of. Office of Alderman, discharge the duties of Office of Alderman of the City of Davenport, the City of Davenport, County of Scott, County of Scott, State of Iowa, State of Iowa, as now or hereafter required, as now or hereafter required. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Can you I, Tim Dunn, do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. I will support the Constitution of the United States. I support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And that I will faithfully. I will faithfully. And impartially. And impartially. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Discharge the duties of aldermen. Discharge the duties of all those. The city of Davenport. City of Davenport. County of Scott. County of Scott. State of Iowa. State of Iowa. As now or hereafter required by law. Now or hereafter required by law. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Who's the rest of Bob likes you this. <laughs> Oh, Thank you. 
hand, repeat after me. State your name. Marion McGinnis. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And that I will faithfully. And I will faithfully. And impartially. And impartially. Discharge to the best of my abilities. Discharge to the best of my abilities. The duties of office of the alderman. The duties of the office of the alderman. City of Davenport. City of Davenport. County of Scott. County of Scott. State of Iowa. State of Iowa. As now or hereafter required by law. As now or hereafter required by law. after me. State your name. I, Jade Burke Walter. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. And impartially. And impartially. To the best of my abilities. To the best of my abilities. Discharge the duties of office of alderman. Discharge the duties of office of alderman. The city of Davenport. The city of Davenport. County of Scott. County of Scott. State of Iowa. State of Iowa. As now or hereafter required by law. As now or hereafter required by law. Thank you. Raise your right hand, repeat after me. State your name. I, Tim Keller. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And that I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. And, and um, impartially. And impartially. To the best of my abilities. To the best of my abilities. Discharge the duties of office of the alderman. Discharge the duties of office of alderman. City of Davenport. City of Davenport. County of Scott. County of Scott. State of Iowa. State of Iowa. As now or hereafter required by law. As now and hereafter required by law. Thank you so much.
Ben Jokic. Do solemnly swear or affirm, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States. I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Iowa. The Constitution of the State of Iowa. And that I will faithfully, and I will faithfully and impartially and impartially to the best of my ability, to the best of my abilities, discharge the duties of office of the alderman, discharge the duties of the office of alderman, city of Davenport, city of Davenport, county of Scott, county of Scott, state of Iowa, state of Iowa, is now or hereafter required by law, is now or hereafter required by law. Lynch. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. That I will faithfully. I will faithfully. And impartially. And impartially. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Discharge the duties of office of alderman. Discharge the duties of office of alderman. City of Davenport. City of Davenport. County of Scott. County of Scott. State of Iowa. State of Iowa. Is now or hereafter required by law. Is now or hereafter required by law. Thank you. Solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. I will support the Constitution of the United States. I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. The Constitution of the State of Iowa. And I will faithfully. I will faithfully and impartially. Impartially. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Discharge the duties of aldermen. Discharge the duties of aldermen. In the city of Davenport. City of Davenport. County of Scott, County of Scott, State of Iowa, State of Iowa, is now or hereafter required by law. Is now and hereafter required by law. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully and impartially and impartially and to the best of my abilities. And to the best of my abilities. Discharge the duties of office of alderman. Discharge the duties of office of alderman. City of Davenport. City of Davenport. 
County of Scott. County of Scott. State of Iowa. State of Iowa. Is now or hereafter required by law. Is now or hereafter required by law. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And that I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. And impartially. And impartially. And to the best of my ability. And to the best of my ability. Discharge the duties of Alderwoman. Discharge the duties of Alderwoman. The city of Davenport. Of the city of Davenport. County of Scott. County of Scott. State of Iowa. State of Iowa. As now or hereafter required by law. As now or hereafter required by law. Let's give uh, Supreme Court Justice Waterman thanks for coming. <laughs> Before we start the official uh, committee of the whole council meeting, I, we're going to pause a little bit, and family or folks that uh, would like to depart, we'll, we'll give you a few moments to do that before we start. So if you'd like to do that, you're certainly welcome to stay for the meeting if you'd like. So we'll pause here.
City Council Committee of the Whole, meeting for Wednesday, January 3rd, 2024, to order. Um, at this time, I'm going to invite Father Juarez from St. Anthony's Parish. Um, as a tradition, we ask uh, for a blessing, an invocation um, of, for the new council, the new year, and Father Juarez has graciously agreed to do that. So I'll ask for everybody's uh, attention. Father, please. First of all, I want to thank uh, Mayor Matson for inviting, inviting me today as we begin this new year of 2024 with a new city council. St. Anthony and Davenport have a long history that dates back to the foundation of this city and the establishment of St. Anthony as one of the first buildings in Davenport dedicated to God in 1837. In the history of St. Anthony's 1837 to 1953, from that I read, in the fall of 1835, Antoine Leclerc, Major William Gordon, Colonel George Davenport, Major Thomas Smith, Alex McGregor, Levi S. Colton, and Philip Hambaugh met at Colonel Davenport's house on Rock Island to arrange for the purchase of land preparatory to the establishment of Davenport. The site they selected was the quarter section which Leclerc had recently purchased from R.H. Spencer and A.M. McLeod for the sum of $150. It lay immediately west of Leclerc's original grant, which terminated at Harrison Street. The new city was to be built between the river and 7th Street and between Harrison and Warren Streets. The proprietors paying $2,000 for the determined area. In that same history, Father Masukeli, Samuel Masukeli, the Dominican missionary of the Upper Mississippi Valley, who founded churches in Wisconsin, Illinois, and Iowa, wrote in 1843 from his native Milan, Italy, the following. Among the most beautiful and charming sites on the western banks of the Mississippi is the one opposite the famous Rock Island, more than 100 miles from Dubuque down the river. Nature herself seems to have shaped this regular verdant slope, girdled and shielded by hills, that man might raise a city. The people of St. Anthony are proud to know that our building was instrumental to the raising of the city of Davenport. Given that the first church building erected on St. Anthony Square served not only as a place of worship, but as a public house for the city and county. It was here or there that the Honorable Joseph Williams, first judge of the second judicial district, presided, thus making St. Anthony's brick church the place of all public gatherings of any size, debates, and council sessions. As this council gathers to conduct the affairs of our community, I find the words of the first pastor of St. Anthony, Reverend Pelamorchus, who spoke at the third annual banquet of the Scott County Pioneer Settlers Association quite instructive. He said, Leclerc and Davenport, those two names are and will be for a long time to come inseparable. Davenport, though destined to be a city, might have languished if it had not been for the enterprising genius and liberal mind of Antoine Leclerc. He is not a man of one idea. He seems to be made on purpose for being the founder of a city. Liberal in his views, he never inquired of a man from what country he was coming or to what creed he belonged. He was kind to all and encouraged all. He tried to be a benefactor to all in encouraging the mechanic and the professional man. He was the friend of the poor as well as the rich. May we be kind and encourage all. May we work together for the common good 
of the residents of this city, and may all our deliberations be respectful and fruitful in providing for a safe, prosperous, and welcoming community. Amen. Thank you again, Father Wars. All right, we'll have a moment of silence for anybody who wants to think about whatever it is you want to think about uh, listening to the words of Father. Thank you, everyone. If you please rise and join Alderman Dunn in leading us, Rick Dunn, I need to say the first names now, in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Rick Dunn. Mr. Krupp, our Deputy City Clerk, please call the roll for this new council. R. Dunn? Here. Kelly? Here. McGinnis? Here. Reinhardt's? Here. Grip? Here. Newton? Here. Lynch? Here. T. Dunn? Here. Jobchen? Here. And Burkholder? Here. Ten present, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. So again, good evening and welcome, everyone, as we begin the meeting of the City Council Committee of the whole meeting. I'd like to welcome everybody in attendance and those who are viewing through any particular electronic device. We respectfully welcome your comments and opinions, but please keep in mind that as you share your thoughts, you're sharing them with your fellow Davenporters and anybody throughout the region. We are certainly happy you're participating in your city government, but ask that your participation please reflect the common desire we all share to make Davenport a better place. Especially for the folks in here, if, reminder please, if you just put your cell phone on silent uh, or turn it off simply that it doesn't get in the way of anybody talking. If you want to address the council on any particular item, please come to the podium when called upon. The microphone's above you. We'd love to know your name, ward, or address. And if you're not from here, we'd love to know where you're from. Please, everyone, address the council as a body in a total and do not use or call out any individual names of staff or elected folks. Uh, we will be respectful of you. Please be respectful of us. And as we've done in the past, we want to hear everybody who comes. Uh, so please allow them to speak, uh, allow us to listen, and do not disturb uh, or shout out so that we can't hear what's going on. Thank you very much. City Administ Inner City Administrator Merritt, anything for us tonight? you and working under your leadership over the next two years. Uh, so with that, there are no other administrator updates tonight. We're back to you, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Merritt. So again, I want to say thank you uh, to everyone that came tonight, and I want to welcome this new council. So to start, we'll move to uh, public hearings. We have four public hearings tonight, all under public works. So uh, Alderman Dunn and Alderman Kelly will lead. Alderman Dunn, lead the public, wor uh, public works Thank public you, hearings. Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. We have four public hearings this evening for public works. So open the first public hearing on the plan specification form of contract, an estimated cost for the 2024 sewer lateral and nuisance water service repair program. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this public hearing? Seeing none, I move to close the public hearing. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. This public hearing is closed. I open the second public hearing on the plan specification form of contract and estimated cost for the 2024 pedestrian curb ramp retrofit program. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this public hearing? Seeing none, I move to close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. This public hearing is closed. I open the third public hearing on the plan specification form of contract and estimated cost for the Cork Hill Park Splash Pad project. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this public hearing? Seeing none, I move to close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. That public hearing is closed and I open the fourth and final public hearing on the plan specification form of contract and estimated cost for the compost facility aeration trench replacement project. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this public hearing? Seeing none, I move to close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. 
This public hearing is closed, and that back to you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Dunn and Alderman Kelly. Next area is petitions and communications from any members. Very good. Seeing no, we'll move to the four areas of discussion. We have community development, public safety, public works, and finance. The first one is community development led by Alderman Grip and Alderman Reinerts. Alderman Grip, please. Thank you, Your Honor. We have one item on our community development agenda this evening. It is a resolution setting a public hearing on the proposed conditional conveyance of a portion of city-owned property located in the 2800 block of Eastern Avenue known as the Annie Wittenmeyer campus to AW Holdings, LLC. Is there anyone from the public who is here to comment on this resolution? Anyone from the council? Step, step to the lectern, st state your name and address or ward, please. You have five um, minutes. Jane, I do ask uh, fifth ward, Davenport. I, I, this is where I'm hearing about this and I'm just curious who this holding company is and what the plans for the Annie Wittenmeyer complex are and because I haven't heard anything about it at all. So I, I guess this isn't the time that I get it filled in, but I'd hope that we would fill the public in before you guys make a decision to give it to somebody. Yeah. So uh, just for a point of clarification, and we are entering into uh, a new council year, so I will say that uh, this is a resolution to set the public hearing. The public hearing will be on January 17th, so the se second cycle of January, uh, at which point we will start uh, the discussion of all of the specifics. Um, the background history is in the green sheets. Um, if you go online to the Novus agenda, you can find the background information on Annie Whitmire, but this will come back on January 17th and the council will have a, a more in-depth discussion on the specifics of this. Um, sir, uh, you can, you have five minutes, state your name and address. Oh, please. Gary Eklund, I live in Davenport, Iowa. Um, I uh, am probably opposed to this. Uh, again, you just mentioned that there will be more details forthcoming and I will look forward to seeing those. Uh, I know um, I got up and spoke uh, a couple weeks ago when there was an announcement of the demolition of property at Annie Wittenmeyer, which is a historically protected uh, place. And it was explained to me that the buildings that were being demolished were not old enough to be technically the historic. And I'm assuming that it passed the city hall and they're being demolished. I have not had time to go by and see if there's demolition in place. And uh, I see a lot of other demolition, but I haven't seen that demolition. And I don't know if the buildings are down yet, um, but I think, uh, it seems like to me it's up to no good. I, I don't see any reason to demolish the buildings. I, I, I didn't see any reason to demolish the other one, and I'm not sure what this is about. But I suspect, I suspect foul play from my perspective. I, I don't know. It's sort of like if, if some business or not-for-profit wants to move out of their existing lease or, or agreement, um, there's probably someone else who would be willing to move in without giving it away. So I, I'm probably opposed to this. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public who's here to comment on this item? Is there any comment from the council? Alderman Kelly. Thank you, Chair. First and foremost, to my people in the Fifth Ward, if you guys have any questions, let's get together because I'm excited for this. So if I'm excited, because like I said, not a lot of stuff happens in our neighborhood, we definitely need to talk about it because it, it sounds good as long as the city and legal can get all the stuff that we've been working with on the side, I'm telling you, it's, it's gonna be exciting. So I definitely, if you wanna hang around, holler at me. All right, thank you. Any other comments from council? Seeing none, uh, Alderman Reinerts, will you please set our agenda? Thank you, I uh, make a motion to put it on consent. Second. There's a motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. Are there any opposed? All right, that concludes community development. Back to you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Grip and Alderman Reinerts. Next area is public safety. Alderman Jobshin and Alderman Tim Dunn will discuss. Alderman Jobshin, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First item under the public safety agenda is a second consideration ordinance amending Schedule 11, resident parking only, of Chapter 10.96, entitled Schedules, by adding Scott Street along the west side from West 17th Street south to the alley there too. Is there anyone from the public wishing to comment on this item? Anyone from council? Seeing none, that item moves on. Item number two is a motion approving noise variance on the listed date and time for an outdoor event. Downtown Downport Partnership, Istravaganza Freight House, 421 West River Drive, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Saturday, January 13th, 2024. Outdoor music, over 50 dBA. 
Is there anyone from the public wishing to comment on this item? Anyone from council? Seeing none, that item will move on. And we have item number three, motion approving beer and liquor license applications. I'll read those under section A, new license, new owner, temporary permit, temporary outdoor area location, transfer, et cetera. Uh, first, we have LPT number 5523, 3624 West Locust Street, new license, owner, license type, class B beer, carry out. Next, LPT number 5524, 2805 Telegraph Road, new license slash owner, license type, class B beer, carry out. Next, LPT number 5525, 3129 Rockingham Road, new license slash owner, license type, class B beer, carry out. Next, LP, LPT number 5522, 1732 North Marquette Street, new license owner, license type, class B beer, carry out. Next, LPT number 5519, 1136 West Locust Street, new license slash owner, license type, class B beer, carry out. Next, LPT number 5520, 2242 East 12th Street, new license slash owner, license type, class B beer, carry out. Next, LPT number 5521, 303 West Locust Street, new license slash owner, license type, class B beer, carry out. Then we have LPT number 5517, 201 West 53rd Street, new license slash owner, license type, class B beer, B beer, carry out. And lastly, LPT number 5518, 1670 West Kimberly Road, new license slash owner, license type, class B beer, beer carry out. Then we have those items listed under Section B, the annual license renewals, which I do not read, but are there for your review. Is there anyone from the public wishing to comment on any of these items? Anyone from council? Seeing none, then I would... Oh, excuse me. Alderman Kelly. Thank you. So I have a question for legal. So a lot of these LPTs are going to be in my neighborhood, and it says be beer. Is that only beer? Because we, at one point in time, was doing beer and liquor. So... Do we know? What the B beer allows. Okay, thank you, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, before I ask for a motion, then I would just ask Alderman Kelly um, if he would request that it be on consent or discussion for those items. comes up that all items on section A are on the on the discussion agenda. So therefore, I'll turn it over to Alderman Dunn to please set our agenda. Thank you. I'd like to set a motion in place for all items to be put on this consent agenda. Thank you. Except for, except for those under section A. Except for those under section A. A number three. And three. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? All opposed, same sign. That ends public safety. Mr. Mayor, back to you. Thank you, Alderman Jobson and Alderman Tim Dunn. The next area is uh, public works. Alderman Rick Dunn and Alderman Kelly would discuss. Alderman Dunn, please. Thank you, Your Honor. We have 13 items this evening for public works. Item number one is a resolution accepting work completed under the 2023 ADA ramp program by Collins Concrete in the amount of $151,810.59. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number two is a resolution awarding a contract for the 2024 commercial alley resurfacing to Valley Construction in the amount of $110,590. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council. Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number three is a resolution awarding a contract for the Goose Creek Trail 46th Street to 53rd Street overlay project to Langman Construction in the amount of $199,000. $958.34. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council. Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number four is a resolution awarding a contract for the Modern Woodman Park Field Lighting Retrofit Project to Musco Lighting in the amount of $365,000. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council. Alderman Jobjin. Thank you, Alderman Dunn. Um, I apologize to my colleagues for not uh, making the management update uh, meeting yesterday, and I thank staff for sharing um, a lot of the recent information uh, in regards to Modern Woodman Park. You know, this is something that, uh, you know, I've talked with my colleagues before, and, and Modern Woodman Park and the baseball team is a nice cultural amenity to have, but, you know, as uh, Major League Baseball keeps 
kind of changing the requirements and, and moving the bar um, to my colleagues kind of kind of where I'm starting to think is I don't I don't think the juice is worth the squeeze much anymore and maybe uh, maybe as we proceed forward we start to see if uh, other models uh, might be a little bit more successful for for the city as we go forward those are my thoughts thank you thank you Alderman Jordan anyone else Mayor Matson I just want to let the, everyone know, Chair, as we discussed yesterday, we're going to plan a work session for this particular topic uh, so everybody can have a more in-depth discussion. So I just wanted to make sure everybody's aware of that. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank Anyone you for letting me speak. And before I wrap this one up, I'm going to ask to leave this on discussion, but i got a few questions that I need answered by next week if I could. This audit that occurred this past summer in July, number one, who was present from city staff? Number two, was it noted on the time of the audit to, to those present that the lighting lighting did not meet baseball standards and number three when exactly and how did the city provide be, was provided with the audit findings so that's what I got for next week if you could please provide them I'd appreciate it seeing no one else this item will move on item number five is a resolution approving the plan specification form of contract and if, yes I apologize I just see Alderman Tim Dunn would like to come. I'm sorry, Alderman I, Dunn. I, I realize I, I didn't knew at this, but <clears throat> can I make a request that all the council members receive that uh, the answer to that question um, for Alderman Dunn? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, this side that I will move on. Item number five is a resolution approving the plan specification form of contract and estimated cost for the 2024 sewer lateral and nuisance water service repair program. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Hi, good evening. My name is Cheryl Shagna and I live at 1401 Clay Street. I'm in the third ward. I'm curious about the resolution approving uh, without any money amounts. How do we know uh, what is being approved? Thank you. I'll, I'll have staff answer that for you. I'll call them. I'm sorry. I will have staff come up and answer that question for you. Okay, I'll sit back now. Can we have someone from staff, Mallory or Nicole, please? <clears throat> Nicole Gleason, Public Works Director. So this program is within the CIP, um, and it is generally funded up to approximately one million dollars. But we, in any given year, can't predict how many sewer laterals will break. Um, and the reason it's not specified a dollar amount here is. We have multiple contractors awarded. Since it is random and unknown when it will happen, we want to make sure that we're able to be responsive. But in general, the CIP budget's approximately $1 million. Thank you. Yep. Anyone from council? Is that a matching slide type? Ma'am. 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 Sorry. I'll, I'll have her get up, catch up with you after the meeting to answer your questions. If you would, no call. Thank you. Anyone from council? Mayor Matson. Thank you for allowing me to speak again, Chair. I just want to add that this is one of the most successful welcomed programs that we've uh, uh, done in the city. So I thank the staff for continuing this. Anyone thank else? you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Seeing no one, this item will move on. Item number six is resolution approving the specification, former contract, and estimated cost for the 2024 pedestrian curb ramp retrofit program. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council. Seeing on this item, we'll move on. Item number seven is a resolution approving the plan, specification, form of contract, and estimated cost for the Cork Hill Park Splash Pad project. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing on this item, we'll move on. Item number eight is a resolution approving the plan, specification, form of contract, and estimated cost for the compost facility aeration trench replacement project. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? The same question that she had on number um, five for six, seven, and eight. Like, how much is this going to cost? You know, where there's no estimated cost, and you're just going to prove it without telling us what the cost is for all those things. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Council. Older woman McGinnis. Um, I believe we had this discussion a couple of weeks ago, but if you could um, perhaps, uh, Ms. Gleason, come up and explain 
why we do resolutions the way we do resolutions, and then what comes after that. that I think that will help clarify. Yep, Thank absolutely. You. Nicole Gleason, Public Works. Um, so during the budgeting process in February, you will all approve a CIP, a capital budget, um, that gives an estimate, a preliminary estimate from staff on what this will cost. The reason we don't like to put them expressly in the agenda is we want to make sure that the bidding process can be fair and competitive. Um, so then once it is awarded, it will come back to you with the specific dollars and cents of the project and of course if the project is well outside of what you approved in the original capital budget staff would discuss that with you in advance of putting it on the agenda thank you thank you all the women again us anyone else seeing none this item will move on item number five is a resol <laughs> or item number nine is a resolution approving and adopting preliminary plan specification and plats and schedules for the 2024 alley resurfacing program is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item council Seeing on this item, we'll move on. Item number 10 is a resolution approving the purchase of four new 35-foot electric low-floor buses from Gillig LLC of Livermore, California, in the amount of $4,595,876. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Ron Swainer, Davenport, Rock Island. Does that include the charging systems for these buses, or is that a separate entity? I just wondering in the cost to charge her. Thank you. Can we have staff address that, please? So, um, as you may recall, this was a an electric bus grant. So the, there was a grant specific to the four buses themselves, and an additional portion of the grant was related to the charging facilities. The charging facilities portion was on your agenda for the first cycle of December, and that was approved. Um, and then this is the item for the buses specifically. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> David Anderson, Ward 5. 40 years ago, I was introduced to Denver City Bus. I've been fighting for the ridership, and I find the Gillings professionally a little lower class than New Flyer, but um, I was just wondering how this could be a million dollar bus. Um, back in my day, they used to be 300,000 for fully dressed and 400,000, and now it's over a million. I just, I hope somebody looks into that. I mean, I do have the professional and college degree to back up my saying this that is totally baffling me thank you thank you Anyone so, else? i was hoping they could redo this yes i do have my technical writing degree i hope somebody improves it thank you um what kind of did you support um i just the buses are obviously cutting but um the buses that we have now they don't work they barely run so it's kind of like a is this actually going to make our community better? I think we should think about that too with the money being spent. Thank you. Anyone else? Council? Yes. Seeing no one else, this item will move on. Item number, item number 11 is a resolution ratifying the grant agreement for the Destination Iowa Creative Placemaking Grant through the Iowa Economic Development Authority. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? <clears throat> Yeah, my name is uh, Gary Eklund. I live in uh, Mr. Kelly's ward. Uh, I assume this is Iowa Arts Council money coming through. Uh, I'm not really quite sure what it means. I don't read the green sheets. Once upon a time, I read the green sheets from cover to cover until I couldn't stand it anymore. And uh, so I apologize. I, uh, I'm not much of an online person. However, I do have a website. From someone who never uh, wanted to be on the line, I now have an arts website, and so I want to uh, um, talk about for a minute about the Iowa arts. And sure, uh, sir, Mr. Chair, could you, right. could you please stick to the agenda item? Well, this, the agenda is this, I, isn't, this isn't about art. This is more like the Main Street Landing project. Well, it's a, it's a, it's not art. Just Destination Iowa Creative Placemaking Grant. So that means that this is a creative placemaking place, it and this is creative placemaking. And sir, please stick to the topic. Okay, I don't understand. I, 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 I don't believe I would, that we I would, I would, I would no, suggest. No, I'm trying to address the topic. I, right. I'm, I'm but opposed. But you're not, you're not, the problem is you're not addressing what is on the, on the sheet. I'm if opposed. You like, if you would like to go to, back and read the green sheet to see what that actually is. Like I said, this is about Main Street Landing, and we've been talking about Main Street Landing for several years now. 
Um, so if you want to talk about Main Street Landing, please can, feel free can to. I speak? Can I speak? Are you going to take my whole five minutes? You can speak. I, I want to speak if you would like to speak I to the speak. topic. That I'm speaking fine. to the Thank topic you. if you don't take my entire five minutes. I am opposed to taking Proceed. any money for a creative destination because the city of Davenport destroyed my artwork, destroyed my paints, destroyed my brushes. Mr. Chair, I'm going to ask you to sit down. We or, don't deserve okay. arts money. Mr. Okay. Eklund, you need Thank to sit you. down. Anyone else? Council. Creative destination. See any any art. Sir. Mr. Eklund, one more outburst or disturbance, you will be removed from the council chamber. I just said that. Any more disturbance, you will be removed. Thank you. Anyone from council? Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number 12 is a motion accepting asphalt paving services completed under the Veterans Memorial Park Phase 2 project by Hawkeye Paving Corporation, the amount of $47,695. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council. Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number 13 is a motion awarding a contract for the Freight House West Brick Wall Repair Project to buy state masonry in the amount of $80,442. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing none, this item will move on. And Alderman Kelly, would you set the agenda for us, please? Thank you, sir. I'd like to make a motion to put all items on consent except for number four, leaving that on discussion. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign, and that will conclude public works. This evening, back to you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Thank you, Alderman Dunn and Alderman uh, Rick, uh, Rick Dunn and Alderman Kelly. Now we uh, have our last area of discussion is finance. Alderwoman Newton, Alderwoman Lynch will discuss. Alderwoman Newton, please. Thank you, Mayor Madsen. Uh, tonight, Alderwoman Lynch and I have 12 items to discuss on the finance agenda. First item. Resolution adopting the City of Davenport's 2024 State Legislative Program. Is there anyone from the public wishing to speak on this item? Is there anyone from Council? Um, seeing none, uh, this item will move on. I, I do want to provide Alderwoman Lynch notification that I will be abstaining on issue paper 2404 due to a conflict when that comes up for a vote. Item two. Resolution awarding a contract for urban homestead program new construction at 1838 West 4th Street project to Clark Design and Development of Bentendorf, Iowa in the base bid amount of $341,887.84 and not to exceed an amount of $356,887.84 for contingencies. Is there anyone from the public wishing to speak to this item? Is there anyone from Council? Alderman Reinhardt. Thank you, Chair. Um, my question is, well, actually, I believe in this program. The one question I have is the investment of $341,887.84. How much of that do we realize net after the property is completed and then the individual pays what he can afford to uh, purchase it from the city? Typically, what is our net? So we don't have a total investment of 341000 We wound up with some form of a, a balance between um, recoverable funds and non-recoverable funds, I guess is my question. Uh, I guess that would be from staff. And I would request someone from staff please answer those questions. Bruce Berger, Community and Economic Development. So you're, you're exactly right. The cost of the rehab is expensive, and it, it usually is attributed to a number of the federal requirements and things that we have to spend the money on, as well as contractor costs and materials costs that have gone up. Um, we usually sell the properties for right at appraised value, and so that difference is what the federal funds allow us to, to grant or subsidize that cost because it's below market value. So, yeah, the difference usually... Um, I'll say probably it's a guess because we haven't we haven't uh, sold the project yet. But the last few that we've done probably have been in the 140, 150 range. So that subsidy is probably in that. You know. So typically we may we may recover 40 or 50 percent of our investment. Yeah, yeah, in that range. All right. Thank you. Yep, yep. Thank you. Anyone else from council? Alderwoman McGinnis. Mr. Berger, if you could come back. Um, so the other question I think that. Um, 
uh, people you know, often ask about. So the money that comes back to us, where does that go? Oh, sure. Um, so it's a revolving loan fund in essence. And so the dollars that come back allow us to do more projects uh, down the line. We've been during, doing urban homestead projects for 40 some years roughly. Um, and so we've, we've got a loan pool and then when those dollars come back, it allows us to do more projects in the coming years. And this is funded, comes from the source uh, of these funds and to begin with comes from? From HUD, right? So these are uh, US housing and urban development dollars um, that have to be spent on certain things. And affordable housing is one of the things mm -hmm. that routinely we've, we've uh, been able to, to spend the money on. We usually will do one or two of these projects every year mm -hmm. and sell them and then be able to do another one or two as time goes by. So. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Alderman Grip. Thank you. Uh, so I am going to put a plug in here um, for uh, March. We will do a CDBG community development block grant and home uh, month tour where we get a trolley and we will visit all of the projects that we did through these federal dollars. Um, it is a really good way for you to see um, how these dollars are being spent. These are federal dollars. We're a pass through uh, for the dollars. It is a good tool to make small incremental uh, improvements specifically in our central city. But I, I know when you're first on the council and you look at how much you're spending to replace a house, it's a lot of money. Um, but one of the things the federal government ensures is when you hand the keys to that new homeowner, uh, everything is new, everything is to code, they have no expenses. And we have a, a homeowner in our central city, in our heritage neighborhoods, who now has a great home. Um, and it's been a really uh, powerful tool in, in helping us uh, reinvigorate our, our heritage neighborhoods. So I encourage all of my colleagues, when you get that invite from community development uh, team in March, that you, you uh, make the time to come and see these projects up close. Thank you. Seeing no one else from council, moving on to item three. Resolution approving a payment of $171,880.14 to Tyler Technologies, Inc. of Falmouth, Maine, uh, for the annual licensing of Munis software system for the period of November 1, 2023 to October 31st, 2024. Is there anyone from the public wishing to speak on this item? Anyone from council? Seeing none, this item moves forward. Item number four. Resolution adopting the Internal Revenue Service mileage rate to reimburse employees for use of a personal vehicle for city business. Is there anyone from the public wishing to speak on this item? As a, as a reminder, please state your name, order, address, and you will have five minutes to speak. Thank you. Uh, um, Gary Eklund, I live in uh, Alderman Kelly's ward. And uh, um, if I may just say that uh, congratulations to all the new people on the city council. I don't know anybody's positions. I don't know how anybody's gonna vote. I know you're all individuals. I hope you um, examine stuff with your own mind. Um, and what a re word of recommendation is, um, you obviously have to listen to city staff because city staff is city staff, but ask for evidence, think for yourself. Do not assume that what they're telling you is correct. Um, you will hear me down here in different weeks and I have my opinions. I don't expect them to be yours. But I'm very glad I'll get back to this particular agenda item. Although, like I said, I do really congratulate the winners, uh, the new people on the city council, and uh, I don't presume. Miss, Miss Chair. Okay. Okay. Can I? Address, I'm, I'm trying to be polite and congratulate the people, but I'll, I'll get to the agenda item. Mileage, personal car mileage. Um, this is something that I've been thinking about a lot as an, er an area where the city could save millions of dollars every year, I believe, by requiring all employees except for perhaps the police chief or, and the fire chief, if you really have to. But right now, I'm curious exactly how many people in the city drive vehicles home every night and, and why? You know, it's sort of like if, if I'm the um, assistant chief of this or that, do I really need to drive a company car home to Bettendorf every night with, the gas, with us paying the gases? What, so anyway, what I'm suggesting is if you would ask staff to prepare a list of all current city employees who drive a city vehicle at home at night, their job titles and why, because they should all convert over to this system. I drove 5.5 miles from Davenport City Hall to the um, annex on East 46th Street. Okay, 5.5 miles, you get the IRS rate for driving your personal car. 
why we would be giving a city vehicle to someone to drive home to Benton North or the countryside or wherever. Why, we're, why are we paying their gas money for them to go? And I know at least one of the people um, is an independent business person. And I don't believe that they would give a, 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 a company car to an employee and say, we'll pay you to go to the restaurant, we'll pay you to go to the grocery store, we'll pay you to go to the movies, we'll buy your gas for all that stuff because I'm just feeling generous. You'd give them a company car to drive to their business site to do their business and come back and they would probably drive a civilian their own car unless they were like a middle of the night get up at 4 a.m. and go take care of something thing but I hope that the independent business people will look at this and say why are we spending millions of dollars giving employees cars to drive home at night and paying for their gasoline when that millions of dollars could be spent better so I hope I address the actual topic thank you thank you sir is there anyone else wishing to speak on this item anyone from council alderwoman McGinnis Is there anyone else wishing to speak from council? Seeing none, this item moves on. Item number five, resolution establishing the interest rate for special assessments. Is there anyone from the public wishing to speak on this item? Is there anyone from council? Seeing none, item five moves on. Moving on to item six, resolution accepting the FY 2023 Port Security Grant Program grant from the Federal Emergency Management Agency, otherwise known as FEMA, in the amount of 600,000. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council, uh, Alderman Rick Dunn. Thank you, I just wanna point out that this is a federal grant we received for a new fire vote for the fire department. I just wanna say thanks to staff for reaching out and getting that one, so thank you. Seeing no one else from council, item six moves on. Moving on to item seven. Resolution approving an amendment to the existing agreement with the Humane Society of Scott County, Iowa in the amount of 250,000 for services provided through June 30th of 2024. Is there anyone from the public wishing to speak on this item? Hi everyone, uh, my name is Kelly Hickles. I live in the seventh ward of Davenport and I am the current vice president, board vice president for the Humane Society of Scott County. Um, our organization desires to continue as we have for decades to provide the animal care and control services the city receives. We thoroughly enjoy providing these services for the city and are more than willing to continue these services under a contract that accurately pays for the services rendered. However, we cannot continue these services at a payment of $402,000 a year when the cost to provide the services is currently over $1.3 million. While Davenport is around 35% of the incoming financials at the Humane Society, services for Davenport are 80% of our expenses. Our nonprofit cannot continue to subsidize that deficit. We have made it known to city staff that we are more than open to um, ways in which uh, some of our operating costs, including vehicle maintenance, building maintenance, utility costs, et cetera, can be lessened by receiving more in-kind assistance from the city. We have also offered ideas in which we can work together to raise more <coughs> funds for the city through mandatory veterinary clinic license sales to cover part of the city's overall cost responsibility. Changes to local ordinance have, ordinances have also been recommended as ways to reduce overall costs over time. These recommendations have yet to be seriously acknowledged. Thank you for your consideration in the additional $250,000 service payment to extend the current services at least until June 30th, 2024. We have requested a formal contract agreement to continue services past that date be made by February 29th, 2024 to aid all parties involved in planning for what the future holds. Should the $250,000 not be approved, animal shelter and animal control services provided by the Humane Society on behalf of the city are scheduled to cease on February 29th, 2024. We do not wish to see this outcome and we hope to find an agreement um, soon. Finally, I would like to provide clarification on a misconception we have heard come up multiple times in the last several weeks that the Humane Society of Scott County has been offered a new facility by the city of Davenport and that we've turned that down. We have never received an offer of a new facility. There have been one or two comments from city staff that may have been an option, that there may be an option to help with a building, but no formal details or offers have ever been provided to us. We would love to discuss options for a new facility if that is something the city can help with. 
Thank you for your time, and we look forward to future discussions. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public wishing to speak on this item? As a reminder, please state your full name, award, or city. Thank you. Uh, Mary Johansson, First Ward. Um, I'm concerned that if the city doesn't work with the Humane Society, that uh, the city will have to pick up uh, the, the fund. They'll have to su support it with uh, our funds, our taxpayer funds. And I'm wondering if there is a budget that the city has created uh, to let us know in case they decide that this is going to go forward, that the city is going to develop a new society uh, to take care of these dogs uh, and cats and rabbits and everything else. But I'm concerned, can the city do it cheaper? Um, I hope that all of the all the people have take that into consideration the networking that the Humane Society has with uh, rescues and everything else that's involved. It's, it's very established. And Davenport appears to have the majority of the animals that are being picked up by the Humane Society. So uh, the brunt of it is on us. But I am concerned that uh, <coughs> the city be aware of uh, the funding that it'll take to replace uh, the services of the Humane Society. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, my name is Don Mitch, and I'm from the Underward. And I was wondering, uh, since you guys offered the uh, Humane Society a building that, that they turned down, <clears throat> down, why would you offer the homeless people that building? So you guys are telling me that um, these animals are, are more important than a human's life? What do they eat at? You know, a dog can eat out of the garbage. A human can't. Can't, but that's what they're doing now. Now, you guys are spending all this money here and there. They're thinking about the homeless. Y'all see all you guys aren't homeless. You guys eat every day. What about the other people that don't eat? Invite them to your house and let them eat, Mayor Matson. Mayor Matson? No. Oh. Hi, um, my name is Andrea Gaskin. I live in Davenport, Iowa. Um, I'm actually the assistant director at King's Harvest Pet Rescue. I believe that Scott County Humane Society provides an invaluable service to our community and that they have for decades through their shelter and animal control. It would be a shame to discontinue animal control through Scott County Humane Society so soon after they finally achieved um, less than a 10% kill rate. Um, I am curious, too, about what would happen to the animals after their seven-day stray hold, exactly what that would look like for the animals. Thank you. <clears throat> Look on Dixon, 7th Ward. Um, I had an opportunity to go and speak um, with some people at the Humane Society, and I, got, I want, just want to say the work that these people do, the volunteers... Uh, not only do they have animals that are there, but they also have volunteers that have the animals in their home as well. So all the work that they put in, it, it's, it's substantial. At least with y'all, and I understand that it's a lot of money, but the work that they do, Dealing with these animals, not only just animals, but dangerous animals, too. They're doing an amazing job. And I'm a person, I don't like dogs or cats or nothing like that, okay? I'm not that kind of person. I don't like animals at all. Give me a goldfish, and I'm good, okay? <laughs> but these people, these volunteers, the, the directors, they are doing an amazing job. At least what the city can do is give them what they need now to continue doing the great job that they're doing now. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public? <coughs> Just to add to what's been said, Cheryl Shagno, 1401 Clay Street, uh, that the volunteers are actually priceless. Everybody knows volunteers are priceless. And you could actually alienate a bunch of the volunteers they're doing it out of the goodness of their hearts simply because of a change that doesn't feel right to people they don't understand why if you can show us the money if you could show us that there's a savings 
finance department. If you can show us that there'll be less money sent, spent, you could possibly win over some of the people, some of the residents, but most importantly, the volunteers. I go into this place at least once a month. They are fantastic, always. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public wishing to speak on this item? Good evening. My name is Deanna Reckemeyer, and I'm a resident of Davenport. I've lived here nearly my entire life. I am a volunteer for the Humane Society. I foster homes or foster cats in my home. Uh, at any given time, their volunteers have over 200 animals in our personal homes that we are taking care of on their behalf. And um, you may not uh, be able to have that if the city takes this over. Um, I am very excited about the changes the Humane Society has made over the last couple of years. They've worked very, very hard to make improvements to their facility, to their policies, to their procedures. They have been recognized as a no-kill shelter, which the Humane Society has not always been able to say. And I am an animal lover. <laughs> and so I uh, am very happy to see that. Um, the fosters I get have had various surgeries. They have all their medical care. They're spayed and neutered. They're found good adoptive homes. This is not a seven day or 10 day process. My concern is also, what is the budget that the city has to pay for this? I am a city finance director. I understand the competition for the general fund dollars more than probably <laughs> most people sitting behind me because it's what I do for a living. I do understand, but I also understand it is a need. It is something they have the expertise in, they have the connections in, they have the volunteers, they have the facilities and the equipment. So I do ask that both sides come to the table with good intentions and try to work out something that is best for this community uh, going forward. I do not believe that the city can do this for less. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, I, I kind of agree with, with her. But Please, ma'am. Please state your name. Jane Agnes Hendricks Ward. again. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. Um, fifth word. Um, I mean, it's duplication of services, you know, of what, what we already have going on here in, in Scott County and Davenport. And why are we looking at that? I and mean, we just got out of the housing market, you know, by selling the heritage building. Why are we getting into that animal control market with um, implementing an, an internal animal service unit and then negotiating any related <coughs> contracts or agreements? If we can't even negotiate an agreement with our current... Uh, Ms. Duex, we're only addressing... Uh, number seven? Number seven. I asked someone if we had moved on. They thought we were doing both together. I beg yeah. your pardon. No. We'll welcome you back, Ms. Duex. Thank you. Anyone else? LaShawna well, Dixon, Seventh Ward. Thank you for being so polite. Um, I had an opportunity to go and see the Humane Society as well. I am not an animal lover, but I did offer my home to frogs, fish, and things like that that don't roam around. <laughs> um, but my thing is, is that they run this um, Humane Society beautifully, and it is so nice. The city, if if they're not supported, the city, the city in total will be losing of animal care. They really care about these animals. Um, also, my question is: is how are you going to get employees to do the work that the Humane Society does? There's not a lot of people that will do it. I mean, I, I can't speak for everybody else. I love some dogs, but. Um, I don't think there's going to be a lot of people willing to do a job dealing with animals. So you're going to go and take their employees away to hire them for the city. We could just keep the building that's already established for these animals to keep them there and support them. Like we got to make it make sense. So I'm asking you to give them the support that they need, that they need, not just like you, what you feel that is comfortable for you to give them. They do a large amount. So make sure you give them what they need and what they are entitled to for all the work that they do. I think it's a shame is that they have to call in volunteers when they help the city so much. These people, and I went up there and there was people bringing in food and treats for these animals. I think it's absolutely amazing 
They're already, already established. Why are we putting more on the city when the city can't even handle part of what's really going on? Make it make sense. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Just Knowles, second ward. The only thing I can say is leave something alone that doesn't need to be fixed. We have enough issues within our city that it's costing us an arm and a leg and maybe a back at it. If it's working and it, why, why try to change it? If we can afford to pay $3 million for some lights, we can afford to pay the Humane Society to do their job that they're already currently doing. Ladies and gentlemen, please refrain from clapping or talking so we can hear the young lady speak. Thank you. We can pay the Humane Society to continue doing the good work that they've already been doing for many, many years. I've been in Davenport for 33 years, and I don't remember a time where I haven't heard of the Humane Society doing something good or taking care of animals. Unlike them, I am an animal lover. I have anything from a reptile to a barking dog that don't shut up. But again, I'm just asking, if it's working, just pay the people. Thank you. Anyone else? Hello, my name is Megan Keeler. I'm with It Takes a Village Animal Rescue and Resources in Muscatine, Iowa. I'm here to hopefully make my points brief and to just offer some insight as far as these conversations about Humane Society of Scott County. Um, when speaking of um, moving to your own facility and taking these things on yourself, there are some things that you need to take into consideration that maybe those outside of animal welfare are not aware of. First of all, you will need to be in compliance with the Association of Shelter Veterinarian Standard of Care Guidelines for Animal Shelters. This is no small task and it is not inexpensive. We, my organization has been working with an architect and with the city um, as far as like zoning requirements and to build our own facility, okay, to build a new facility for our organization. And coming in like the bare bones estimate, so like your, your most basic adherence to those guidelines, we're at an $8.2 million price tag. And that is without any property acquisition. That is the building itself and the infrastructure inside that is needed. So if you were looking to um, construct something that was um, more apt for longevity of standard of care and remain within those standards for at least the next 10 years, you're looking closer to $10 million. That is just for the facility. Now, as city council members, most of you know that when you're talking about the salary of a city government employee, which this would then be, you're not taking just that, you know, the salary itself. You're looking at 150% of the salary, if not closer to 160% of the salary, because of the benefits and the payroll taxes and the additional expenses that are right there with it. You have to be realistic when you start saying, we're gonna do it ourselves, because it's not realistic. You have experts in the field that are already providing these services. And the thing is, is that, and I, I'm sure you know this, many people do, like the, the animal world is exploding. It is one of the most growing um, commercial endeavors in, in the country right now. That's because people care what's happening to pets. So if you want a scrutinized aspect of city government, open an animal shelter, because it's not just your local people that'll be scrutinizing everything that you do or don't do right. It is the, it's, the, it's the nation watching. It's national organizations. It's Best Friends Network. It's the Humane Society of the United States. It's the ASPCA. They're all watching, and for good reason. Mm -hmm. That standard of care needs to maintain at this higher level. So when you're talking about um, this massive undertaking, this huge expense just to build the facility, and that's outside of just the property. You have to maintain all of this, but there are also standards of care. So Iowa Department of Agriculture and Land Stewardship will come in every year and make sure that your facility is doing what it's supposed to. And Iowa has been held to the fire lately. Like we have had a very bad reputation for breeders and, and shelters not following the rules and not adhering to these basic levels of care. There's oversight that these people performing these services are already export, experts at. I just think that the city of Davenport should probably take a closer look at what is gonna be required because this is not a realistic expectation. And I, I don't think that your tax base is gonna to want to fund a $15 million project by the time it's said and done with when you have these services being provided. And this is a service that is required for a municipality to provide for their tax base. That's what they're paying for. That's all, thank you for your time.
Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public wishing to speak on this item? Now I'll move to council. Alderman Reinhardt. Thank you, Chair. This is a question for staff. How much have we invested this year in animals? Um, it's a $450,000 contract, and is this another 250000 on top of it? Or is this designed just to finish out our, our, half, our six months? That is correct. This would be an additional 250000 on top of what's already been obligated for the fiscal year. So our total expense for the fiscal year is in the neighborhood of $700,000. That's correct. Thank you. Alderman Grip. Thank you, Alderwoman Newton. Um, so first off, I, I want to start by, by saying that uh, personally, as a city council person, I value the Humane Society and the work that they do. I think they provide an important service to the city and the, the people of Davenport and have for a long time. And I think that's important to, to keep at the top of any discussion that we have uh, going forward. Um, as it relates to item number seven, I think we need to approve uh, this resolution to give the additional $250,000 and use this opportunity to continue the discussion in this time uh, with elected officials involved. Uh, but also I think it's important because I'm hearing some things from uh, the citizens to kind of understand how we got here. Um, so we do, we did have a contract with the Humane Society, the city and the Humane Society where the city was paying $402,000 for these services. Last summer, the Humane Society approached the city staff and said that they intended to terminate that contract um, because $402,000 uh, wasn't enough for them to cover the, the cost of providing the services, okay? So it's not that the city of Davenport is going out and trying to say we want to take over animal control or, and sheltering, okay? It's that we had a contract, the Humane Society said we're not receiving enough money for that contract, so we would like to terminate the contract and discuss something else, okay? And so they spent quite a bit of time, staff to staff, our staff and the Humane Society staff, trying to negotiate a reasonable agreement. They have been unable to do that, and that's why we're here. Um, so to give you a context of what that agreement was, 402,000 is what we were paying, that's per year, I believe it's all or most out of our general fund. 1.4 million is the new number. 1.388 million is the new number. So it's a considerable difference coming out of our general, general fund. Understand that our cap is maxed out on the general fund and has been since the 1990s, okay? That is where we pay for police, fire, and public works. That is almost, the, that is the vast majority of that budget. So that is what these dollars are competing for. Okay, so that, that's why we're here, okay? Um, I wanna make this positive. I think that if we get the, the two parties back in the room and start to have the conversation of how can we get there, because there are ways that we can get there. Um, I don't think the city writing a $1.4 million check each year out of the general fund is how we're going to get there. That is my personal opinion. Um, but I would also like the Humane Society to continue to offer these services and not the city of Davenport, okay? I, I don't want to get into that, but at $1.4 out of the general fund, I think it's prudent for us to explore whether that might be the option that we have to take, right? So what I, what I would like to do, I mean, we'll continue the discussion, but I would like to get a few alder, aldermen, I think, uh, the mayor has identified a few, and we'll get the staff together, we'll get the Humane Society together, and we will talk about a collaborative approach. And we have had success with collaborative approaches to funding in the past, and I, I truly believe that we can get there if both parties are willing to figure that out, and I'm happy to be a part of that mediation, and I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll get there. Thank you. Anyone else from council? All right, seeing no one else, item seven moves forward. Next, item eight on the finance agenda. It is a motion directing the city administrator and related staff to implement an internal animal services unit and negotiate any related contracts and or agreements. Um, before I move forward with asking if there's anyone from the public, I do want to make a point that in light of yesterday's conversation at the management update, I understand the complexity of this matter. 
I have received numerous emails from constituents expressing their concerns um, with what is taking place. I believe further information is needed um, before a decision can be made. Um, in, in all, in, in my opinion, this matter should be tabled and I will be requesting a motion to table this matter indefinitely. Prior to doing so, I do want to hear from constituents that are here today wishing to speak on this matter. So I'm going to first ask if there's anyone from the public wishing to speak on this item. Again, please state your name, your city, or ward, and you have five minutes. Thank you. Good evening, council members. I am Erica Gunn, the executive director of the Humane Society of Scott County. I have over a decade of experience in the animal welfare field, both in the private and the public government sector. I have served seven years in the military and have formal education in business administration, leadership, and animal welfare. As our board of directors vice president stated, our organization deeply desires to continue these services for the city. However, we cannot continue those services as we talked about at a payment of $402,000 a year when the cost to provide those services has been found to be $1.3 million. We are a contractor providing a service for the city for a payment. For reference, Iowa City, Cedar Rapids, and Peoria are all examples of similar sized cities to Davenport that operate their own animal control departments as the city staff are requesting to do. Their budgets to do so, this is as this fiscal year, Iowa City is $974,000 with a population of 25,000 less than the city of Davenport. Cedar Rapids is 1,361,000. They do have more people in their population. But I want to mention that they euthanize 25% of the animals that come to them. That is one in every four animal that walk through their doors do not make it out. Peoria is also similar. They spend $1,643,000 to operate their own animal control and animal shelter services. They euthanize 41% of the animals coming to them. That means that almost every one in two animals that walk through their door will never make it out alive. Taking a look at cities that operate their own animal control departments, it is important to point out that a city's responsibility to animals at a shelter that are not claimed by an owner do not end after the stray hold period. It has been stated in negotiations that the Humane Society should be responsible for the cost of the animal once the stray hold is over. With that logic, I pose the question to you. If the city of Davenport operated their own animal control department and shelter, would you euthanize every animal the day after the stray hold instead of finding them a home? While it may be a cheaper option to euthanize animals at the end of a stray hold, we believe that adoptable animals deserve a chance. We hope that the council believes the same and that you wouldn't allow the deaths of thousands of animals a year for the sake of saving a few bucks. To put those dollars into perspective, the current payment of 402,000 is 0.17% of the city's entire current budget. The $1.3 million that the services actually cost and that we are asking for, I understand this is a sticker shock, this is a big number. That's just 0.57% of the entire budget. So for less than 1% of the entire city budget, animal control and animal shelter services could be paid in full. It's also important to note that the payment Davenport provides is not just for the care of the animals in the shelter, as many have brought up so far, but also for the public safety services that animal control provides. 87% of all the work our animal protection services division does are within the city of Davenport. The entire rest of the county, Bettendorf, the county, LeClaire, Eldridge, Walcott, everything you can think of, we hold many other contracts, they only account for 13% of their costs for service. So this is where a lot of the cost is coming from. It is not cheap to hire enough animal control officers to provide correct services for your city. I think one of our biggest complaints that we get is that we do not have officers responding in enough time. If we were paid appropriately, we could provide that. When considering taking animal control and animal sheltering on yourselves, I hope you will consider the following that are beyond the financials that the city staff will eventually present to you. There's the underlying liability in handling dangerous animals, controlled substances, vet care, performing euthanasia of wildlife, because that's also a service provided for the city, so that things like distemper and rabies are not spread. And potentially owned animals. We get animals in that are extremely injured. We don't know if they have an owner or not. Those animals are suffering. At times, they may have to be euthanized. If an owner comes forward, 
It's a difficult thing to deal with. The public relations issues created by increased euthanasia rates should be considered and other issues that are just commonly faced by animal welfare organizations. The multiple dozens of salaries, benefits, retirement plans that will need to be added to the budget. I noticed that in this agenda piece, it was mentioned that the, they would fall under the police department, which I think is a good thing. I can tell you from experience that I used to work for a police department for their animal control division. Uh, however, we know that that also comes with possible union employees and everything that goes along with that. The acquisition of equipment, the controlled substances, licenses to operate, a DEA license. All right, thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else from the public wishing to speak on this item? <coughs> Not on this one. Uh, Andrew Hoyer, fourth ward. I'm a volunteer and a foster with the Humane Society. I'm also the founder of On the Run Pet Rescue, uh, another local nonprofit. We help animal protection services catch the uh, dogs and cats that really don't want to be caught. So we go out and work hand in hand with them and trap them. And we do that all over the Quad Cities. And we so we have a great relationship here in Scott County with the Humane Society. We have no relationship across the river with Rock Island. They want us to hand over every pet we get to them so they can find microchip, just rack up the charges for the owners to come get them. A lot of times that ends up being over $200. A lot of times those dogs don't get picked up. Those are the ones that get left behind. Uh, in a very short time, they have gone to uh, no kill status, which is quite remarkable with, if you look at where they used to be. So I just ask uh, on behalf of all the animal lovers, thousands of them in the city, that uh, we keep it with the uh, Humane Society, Animal Protection Services, and uh, give them what they need to do that. Uh, becoming a no kill shelter is something the city can be proud of, and that has to be worth something. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Thank you. <laughs> so, um, just going back to isn't this a duplication of services? And I guess I'd really like to know who. Just for anyone that just now came in, can you please state your Again, name? My name. Ward. Sorry, Jane. Thank you. Duax, Fifth Ward. Sorry. Protocol. Um, so, who's the staff that was part of the negotiation of this contract last summer? And how come we're just kind of hearing about it now? Um, that it was falling apart, like it took six months, and that reminds me of something else that was like that, that it's like we wait too long to, for us to hear, and there's a big problem. Um, I still think it's duplication of services. We just got out of the housing market, as I said, with the sale of heritage. Why do we want to get in the animal control market? Are we really looking at, this is a rumor or not, the police department taking this over? And, you know, we're so concerned about public safety. How can we ask the police to also do animal control? when, you know, we have issues there. Um, but maybe that's just a rumor. Um, pay them what they're worth. You know, pay them, it's a service that's really important to us. And I've had my dog picked up. I've had to go bail the dog out of, you know, dog jail at the Humane Society. Well, my kid's dog. Luckily, that hasn't happened for several years. But when I've been there, it's a beautiful place. They do great work. You know, I wish I could encourage more people to volunteer, you know, along that lines. Why don't we have more volunteers by the city or encourage more volunteers by the city to get involved in these kind of things that you feel like we don't have enough money to fund mm. because we give it away in behind the scenes settlements of Corey Spiegel. Anyone else? James Woods, 8th Ward. Um, I'm glad to hear that you want to table this. Uh, I also got the chance to sit down and talk to the Humane Society. The city of Davenport owns a truck. We own no kennels. We own no equipment. We own a truck. And if you really look at it, go and price out kennels, you're going to spend substantially more than what you're actually saying on paper. And I don't think we need to put it on a police department for the last six months inside these chambers. We've been told how hard it is to hire officers. We're behind that we need more. I don't think we need to put more on their back. And no disrespect, but at the time of my meeting with the Humane Society, I ask that you create a panel, whether it be through elected officials, and please make the administrator step aside since she is a board member to the Humane Society. Thank you. Sure. 
Cheryl Shagna, 1401 Clay Street, Third War. Officially walked up here two times more than I wanted to right now. Actually did want to address number eight and not number seven. So everything I said for number seven applies for number eight. I like the idea of tabling number eight indefinitely. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public wishing to address this item? Good evening again. My name is Deanna Reckemeyer. I live in Davenport. Um, many people behind me don't know what this means, but let's just also remember police are 411. And that costs a lot of money when you talk about benefits. So I'm very glad that you're interested in tabling this. I'm very uh, glad that we have people that are interested in coming to a table and trying to work out some sort of agreement uh, collaboratively, everybody working together. As I said, I volunteer for them and uh, donate a lot of my time and effort, and there are a lot of other people. And um, this also is a very emotionally draining job. Um, I have held animals in my arms, taking their last breath, and I know anybody who works in rescue has done that. It is hard. It is heartbreaking. Those staff work 24-7, 365, and they take it home with them. They all take animals home at night. Those animals have to be fed on holidays, on Sundays. You know, they come in injured and need emergency medical treatment. It's not just a matter of dollars and cents. And I do not believe that if you pencil out the numbers, you can do it and meet all the qualifications for less money. Thank you. My name is LaShonda Dixon, um, <clears throat> Seventh Ward. I think I am now known as a non-animal lover, but I am. I love animals. That's why I came back up here to talk again about the kill rate. These animals deserve to survive. Thank you for just support them because the, the numbers were stated. We can't, I think it's totally unfair if y'all guys not to decide not to support this, them that these animals die just because you think you're gonna save some money, that's not very fair. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public wishing to speak? Please step forward. Hi, I'm Marcia LaRue and I'm from the Fifth Ward and I am opposed to the city of Davenport creating their own animal services unit and I support a continued contract with the Humane Society of Scott County at an appropriate pay, payment amount. That's all I got. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public wishing to address this item? I'd like to give my colleagues on the council the opportunity to address this item. Alderman Jokin, please. Thank you, Ms. Chair. Um, Question for our interim city administrator. Um, so, with this with this motion this evening, um, please help educate me and may, maybe the public. Is this just a kind of a mechanical issue, right? So, if we if, would approve this next week, does this mean, yep, we are we are absolutely doing this, or is it just, hey, we're allowing allowing our interim city administrator and staff to start crunching numbers a little bit more diligently and then being able to come back and prepare, you know, that so we can we can look apples to apples instead of apples to oranges. Yeah, I think it's a bit of a two part answer, Alderman Jobjen. Um, it would allow us to begin posting the positions uh, that mm -hmm. are needed. Uh, specifically, the first one that would be posted would be the supervisor position to begin mm -hmm. setting up. Uh, the actual unit, which would be staffed by civilians within the police department. Um, but then secondly, and, and probably most importantly, would allow us to begin negotiating with a shelter partner. Uh, under this model, the city would not uh, look to be uh, the staff that are actually running a shelter. We would be engaging with a third party to run that shelter. We have two interested parties uh, that are willing to discuss this with us. Uh, but until we have a formal council action, uh, the staff was not comfortable in moving forward uh, with those negotiations. Okay. Thank you. And so then I guess comment, um, 
I, I second Alderman Grip's comments before about you know thanking the Scott County Humane Society for the service they provide to our community, and um, I too am very hesitant to to see uh, the city of Davenport get into the animal control business, and so I, I kind of go at it from from that lens. Um, I guess for my colleagues this evening, I would maybe request that we don't make the motion to table this evening, maybe wait till next week, get a little bit more information. Um, so if that can just be kind of thrown out there. Um, and and so therefore, um, we don't kind of squash any momentum going forward just, just yet. I mean, that's just my thought process uh, this evening. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, Alderwoman Lynch. Thank you, Ms. Chair. I uh, just have a couple comments here real quick. Um, I was introduced to this idea or this concept prior to my fellow council members that are, were just sworn in this evening. So uh, just a couple of things here. I will always look at something fiscally first, especially when it has to do with how we spend our money. Um, I think that this really should not have made the agenda or we shouldn't be moving forward with this until we have an actual budget analysis, which we don't have. So in my opinion, I think we could have really avoided a lot of this controversy had we have put together an actual budget first before deciding to post jobs. I, I really respect what the staff does. I know they work very hard. I am not trying to um, take that away from them in any way, shape, or form, but this is a very sensitive subject, and now we've upset our uh, constituents over something that we may not have had to do if we could have just really compared apples to apples and not apples to oranges. So thank you. Is there anyone else from council? Um, in light of the discussions here today, hearing from the constituents and as well as all the emails received, also taking into consideration uh, the recommendation of my colleague Jobkin, I think a middle ground would be to still table the matter but for a short period of time to allow us time to obtain all the information necessary. I would respectfully ask uh, staff to prepare um, information for the council um, if, if it's not already contained in the packet that was provided to us at the beginning of this meeting uh, regarding what, if any, and all um, analysis have been completed, um, including prospective budget. Has there been a comparison of other cities in the state of, other, of Iowa, including other metropolitan areas, um, including a measure per capita, uh, per licensed animal, and et cetera? Um, and as much information that can be provided to the council uh, would be greatly appreciated so that the council can make an informed decision. I would certainly echo uh, Alderwoman Lynch's uh, statements. We certainly have to look at this first and foremost from a fiscally conservative and responsible perspective. Um, I am an animal lover, uh, so I do take that into consideration as well. But at the end of the day, uh, I was elected by the people of Davenport to make decisions on behalf of them of what is best for the people of Davenport and the city. I do think that more information is necessary so that we can make make move forward and make the best decision for everyone. I would move the table this matter for two cycles. Do I have a second? I hear a motion and a second. I would, um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Oh. Okay. Uh, City Clerk, can you please conduct a roll call? R. Dunn? Yes. Kelly? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Reiner? Yes. Grip? Yes. Newton? Yes. Lynch? Yes. T. Dunn? Yes. Jobgen? Yes. And Burkholder? So 10 yeses. Thank you. With that, now we move on to item number nine. Nine is a motion approving the purchase of play equipment for Credit Island Nature Play Project to Crouch Recreation uh, in Nebraska in the amount of 89440 using Omnia Partners contract. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Please step forward, give us your name. Jane Duet. Thank step you. Forward. And I don't mean to blur all of them, but I just want to say one thing about 9, 10, and 11, 12, is three out of four of them are out-of-state companies. And I just want to know what kind of due diligence we do with putting out bids or requests for proposals or whatever for in-state and also in-county 
companies. I see this over and over and over, and I just like us to have it's a new year, a new council, that we have a more diligent effort by staff to first hire within the Quad Cities, Scott County, and the state of Iowa before we go to out-of-state companies, if at all possible. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to address this from the public? Anyone from council? Seeing no one else, we move on from item nine to item 10. Motion approving the purchase of picnic tables to Bolin Recreation of Marshalltown, Iowa in the amount of $61,662 using the source wall contract. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Hello, my name is David Ezra Sidron from the third ward. I'm just curious how many picnic tables we're getting for $61,000. That's it. That's a lot of money for picnic tables. Thank you. Anyone else? Makata Dixon, 7th Ward. Picnic tables? Six, $61,000 for picnic tables? <clears throat> All right. Uh, I remember somebody said this a couple weeks ago. Clench your pocketbook, eat some ramen noodles, do something, but not picnic tables. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to address the public? Anyone else from the public wishing to address this item? Is there anyone from council? Yes. Alderwoman Lynch, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you. I just had a quick question for staff. Um, the green sheets that you mentioned, in those green sheets where it discusses more in-depth information, that's where they would list how many picnic tables are purchased, correct? Yes, that's correct. And I just looked and it is there. It's 40 standard tables and eight ADA picnic tables. Thank you. So I also was concerned about this item and so um, did some research on it. So 48 uh, on average is $1,284 per table. That does not include your your ADA cost, though. So if you Google or look up a, a standard picnic table, you're in the realm of $700 and $900. So uh, commercial grade and what's approved for the city, to me, that it, it shook out. So I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. Thank you. Thank you, Alderwoman Lynch. Uh, Alderman Grip. Thank you, Alderwoman Newton. So yeah, I was gonna say this is in the green sheets, 40 standard, 8 ADA, um, but I think the other thing that's listed in there that's important is that uh, we're, the city of Davenport's a member of Sourcewell. It's a cooperative purchasing group that bids items for public entities with other cities, which allows us to actually get the picnic tables at a lower a lower cost uh, than if we just went out, then, went out there and bought them ourselves. So thank you. All right, seeing no one else from council, moving on. Item 10, motion awarding a contract for the purchase of a new dance floor to the River Center to Mighty Light Inc. of Orem, Utah, in the amount of $62,829. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Uh, a dance floor, uh, it's told. The next thing you're gonna tell us is that it's special wood. Please what kind of dancing? Thank Seven you. ward, I'm gonna wear a t-shirt with my name on it. From now Thank on, you, I'm up here so much. So now you all tell us a special wood for the dance floor. Thank you. I'd like to know. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public wishing to ad uh, address us on this matter? Is there anyone from council? Seeing no one from council, this item moves forward. And the last item on the finance agenda, item 12. Motion approving a payment of $84,195 to CDWG of Chicago, Illinois for the annual renewal of VMware licensing to support using the source well contract. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address council on this matter? Seeing no one from the public, is there anyone from council? Seeing no one, this item moves forward. I would just like to mention uh, under purchases of 10,000 to 50,000, we have 25 items for information only. At this moment, um, Alderwoman Lynch, would you please set the agenda, um, keeping in mind that item eight has been tabled for two cycles. Thank you, Ms. Chair. I make a motion to move items number one through seven and nine through 12 to the consent agenda. 
notating that item number eight uh, will be set for um, table for two cycles. All, the, all those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Thank you. This concludes the Finance Committee agenda. I yield the floor back to your honor. Thank you, Alderwoman Minton and Alderwoman Lynch. Uh, the next area is are there any other ordinances, resolutions, and motions? There are none for tonight. Next area is there any public with business? So remember our rules. Please give your name, order, address, and if you're not from here, we'd love to know where you're from. For everybody in the audience, please let us listen to the folks that are speaking. Um, please do not disturb or you'll be asked to leave. We appreciate your time. You'll have five minutes. Thank you. Hi, my name is Gary Eklund, and uh, five minutes goes real fast when you have some things to say, and I do want to say to the new people, uh, your first order of uh, business is probably going to be behind the doors to see whether or not you want to continue stonewalling um, a serious investigation into the role of city staff and elected officials into the collapse of 324 Maine, and I hope that you will all get to the bottom of it. Please don't participate in a cover-up. It's, it's time to investigate the role of city staff and elected officials. I'm alleging, personally, that there has been a multiple years long campaign of white supremacists stalking us. Mr. Eklund, you've made your point multiple times about this. Please refrain from those particular comments. Thank you. Continue. I think you're violating my right to free speech, but I will move on. Uh, um, I, uh, I don't know if you all think I'm stylish tonight. Uh, this wasn't really style, but I, I, uh, I chose to bring that. I, I uh, did establish a, a website to do art sales after the city destroyed my um, paints and brushes and my plants and flowers. And uh, I'm uh, happy to announce that I made my first out of the area sale to someone in uh, Tennessee. Uh, this is an artwork consisting of two boards. It will never be finished because the other two boards, which were primed and cut and ready to go, and all of the paints were destroyed. And uh, Officer Derek Chauvin could come up and verify that if he wanted to. Mr. Eckman, please refrain from names. This is your no, second time I, now. I thought I wasn't supposed to use names, so I used a fake name, which gets the point across. I would use real names if you let me. Uh, so anyway, um, I, 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 want, I, want to, I, I do want to say I want to show you a couple of things that you can buy on my website. Uh, these are just photographs. Uh, like I said, I won't be able to do any painting for a long time because uh, they destroyed over $5,000 worth of paints alone, all my brushes. They said if they ever come back and catch me doing paintings in my yard again, all of my paintings are going in the garbage truck. All my paints and brushes are going in the garbage truck. They said it's illegal for me to do a mural on my wall. Uh, anybody in the city or anybody who would consider moving to Davenport to be a creative, uh, unless you're white and college educated and you pass the one drop test, uh, there is no point whatsoever in moving to Davenport because there's nothing but hatred. I know I'm not supposed to say that. I'm not supposed to criticize the officials who have done crimes against me. I'm not supposed to say that. So let's do the uh, sales part. I've been. Uh, is this gentleman selling things? Is this. Is I'm this a public comment, or is he selling personal items? Uh, Mr. Eklund, are you advertising and selling items personally? I'm trying to tell people they could find my artwork. Can I do that? You cannot do that. Please move on. Well, this is my puppy wants a cheeseburger. This was called, uh, just to, so I can explain why I was wearing this. Okay, this so please a... stop doing that. Last warning. Okay, Sam Cook's been calling me anyway. Thank you. Next, please. No, no, I'm not done. I got you have two a something different. Yes, something different. Please. It's been a long time. Long time coming, but I know change is going to come. That song came out in 1964, 60 years ago this January. 60 years ago this January, a man named Mr. Sam Cook put out a song called The Change Is Going to Come. It's been a long time. Long time coming, but I know change is going to come. I want to make an announcement again. The Union won the Civil War. There's a 14th Amendment that guarantees equal protection to all citizens. Everybody's supposed to be treated illegal illegally. If it's illegal for one person to grow tomatoes, it should be illegal for another person to grow tomatoes. And if it's illegal for one person to come and grow blueberries and they're going to come and smash your blueberries, they should smash all of the blueberries and the city. It's been a long, long time coming, but I know change is going to come. 
I'm going to be revisiting that. I come down here and talk and they don't want to let me talk. I feel like I'm a prisoner here because I've been a crime victim and the police department, rather than investigating and arresting, they did a cover up and then they participated. The police are supposed Mr. to protect, the police are supposed to protect citizens. Thank and you for your time. You're violating my free speech. That, I gave you four warnings. Thank you. But, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, please. I can't think, I can't Thank you, sir. Case. Next, please. Out of order. My name is Jessica Schwainer from Davenport, Rock Island. I humbly ask all the people to hold any comments or any disruptions so that I may get complete my allotted time. I am not here to ruffle any feathers. And if I do, I apologize in advance, but I am here to give some perspective. The Davenport City Pol Council is a body of individuals who conduct business on the behalf of people, the individuals or group of individuals who promote, advise, or conduct business are responsible for accountability of their actions to the people. Accountability is not faceless, nor it is, is it a nameless event. It is transparent. It has been mentioned that these meetings <clears throat> will not be conducted with personal attacks against any body member or any city official, so I simply ask two questions. Number one, what is your, I'm sorry, what is your definition of a personal attack? Just naming an individual or group of individual or naming that individual or group of individuals actions are not personal attacks. It is an action for call for accountability. If the, this body feels that people have committed inappropriate violations, an unaffiliated investigator should be appointed in order to not trample on the people's rights. Number two, how can this council body and the people discuss any conflicted business that had been conducted by individuals or group of individuals in this body Without naming, a, without naming individuals or group of individuals so that the individuals and group of individuals can be held accountable for the actions that they have taken that have led to the conflict. I will answer it. It cannot be done. Not by this council or not by the people. Because transparency and accountability de decorum does not allow for that. The people are not here to cater to their representatives' feelings. They are here to make sure that representatives are conducting the responsibilities of the office for which they hold and bring accountability when needed. In order for the people and the council body to rectify any issue, names are required. To have accountability, I'm sorry, I lost my space to rectify it. Names are connected to actions and actions are discussed. Yet again, actions cannot be discussed without names. This being said, the actions of shutting down a public meeting because individuals or groups of individuals are getting their feelings hurt because they are called out to show accountability to explain their actions is ridiculous and childish. Every time I look up, I lose my spot. The excuses given for multiple shutdowns are just that, excuses. They violate the, the people's right, the people's First Amendment right to speak and be heard. The people come to these meetings to tell their body their concerns, grievances, and conflicts and relay what they want this body to do in relation to the issues that should be resolved first to the benefit of the people, then to the city. Therefore, I request that this body act like adults. Again. 
Set your feelings aside, especially if you don't like what is being said because your personal feelings don't matter. What does matter is that the responsibilities being held by the individuals or groups of individuals held, uh, be uh, held accountable for their actions. On a personal note, the city council is a political position and politics are not nice. So if the council members cannot handle getting their feelings hurt, or then they don't belong in the positions that they are in. As my grand used to say, if you can't handle the heat, get out of the kitchen. This is not high school people. This is real life, real issues, repercussions and consequences. Thank you, ma'am. Next, please. Thank you. Wow, that's quite an agenda for the first one on coming out of the out of the gate. I'm impressed. But I also wanted to say I wanted to welcome you all. Miss Lee, we certainly know who oh, you are, I'm but sorry. if you would, for the record. Judith Lee, second ward. Yes. Um, I also want to say I'm really encouraged from what I saw yesterday and today. Um, one of the things that I followed very closely was the Iowa Municipal Policy Leaders Handbook. That's a guide for Iowa mayors and council members. And they put out a new one in 2024. And uh, it reminded me that the council are the lawmakers of the city through the work that you do and your votes on city business. And it says you have a duty to responsibly govern the city. I am really encouraged with this council because one of the things I've seen the last two days now is that we have aldermen that are ready to systematically study the issues, review alternatives, and choose a course of action. And that's what it says in the book. I think that's wonderful, and I'm seeing that happening. Uh, also, sensing and transmitting the community needs, desires, and comments. That's also what I'm seeing, and you folks are in charge. This is a strong council, weak mayor form of government. And I really think that this council will um, take that to heart to do what needs to be done and speak up and uh, do your homework. So um, I just wanted to say that and say thank you. And the other thing I wanted to say is on December 21st, I had the honor of attending the Community Homelessness Memorial um, after sunset on the longest night of the year, the solstice. And um, one of the things that we did was we gathered to remember the homeless people who have died in Davenport in 2023, on the benches, in the hidden corners of this city. Um, I was surprised to find that 15 of the 40 people were veterans who had died in Davenport as homeless. So there were another 25 that had died that we know of in Davenport. Uh, when I was on council, I remember that homelessness for vets had been declared obliterated. And I'm just wondering what happened to that program that the mayor declared. Uh, a couple of years ago that we w would not have any more veterans who are homeless. And here's 15 that have died. So how many people, veterans and non-veterans, are still living on the street? So I just wanted to raise that with you because that's a concern that I have as well. And I hope to see that um, we continue the program that the mayor had brought up about uh, obliterating veteran homelessness and that we continue that for homelessness in the city. And again, thank you for your service. I'm looking forward to um, watching how we move. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> Just Knowles, second word. Um, the only thing that I have tonight is it's a new year. So let's start off with respect, guys. Can we do that at least? I know some of you guys are new and you don't know what we've been through as citizens of Davenport in the last seven months, but we, if we respect you, can you respect us? That, and, you know, when are we going to see accountability and transparency? We've been asking for seven months. I know the holidays hit me hard knowing that there's loved ones that weren't with their families this year, including my own. But, I mean, we've asked you before, and I'm going to ask you again as I stayed up, was at this pew two days before Brandon's funeral, and I asked... We want to work with you. Can you guys work with us? And just know that regardless, we're not just standing no more. We're going to be stepping this year, coming full force. 
So let's combine forces and make it something bigger than just the city government against their citizens or their citizens against their government. Let's actually be united this year and work together. But that's all I have. Thank you. Anyone else? My name is David Ezra Sidron, third ward. Sometime in the next two years, a jury will award the victims of 324 Main Street over $100 million. The city of Davenport does not have an insurance policy that will cover this, nor does it have enough money in the bank. The city of Davenport will either float junk bonds or go into state receivership, possibly both. And you, the elected officials of the city of Davenport, will forever be remembered as the people in charge when the city went bankrupt. Over the next two years, you will be called into executive session many times. After the public city council meeting, you will go upstairs to the third floor, and a lawyer from Lane Waterman will tell you that the city has nothing to worry about. The lawyer will tell you that they will get the city off using qualified immunity. This is Iowa Code 670.4A, qualified immunity. It's not very long. You can read it in a minute. The law was passed to protect police officers that shoot civilians in the line of duty. It doesn't do anything for cities being sued for felonious malfeasance, which is what the city of Davenport is being sued for in eight separate lawsuits. On August 2nd, 2021, a city of Davenport employee ordered that all rental inspections at 324 Main Street stop immediately, and they were never conducted again right up to the day the building collapsed, killing three and maiming a fourth. That is felonious malfeasance. On February 2nd, 2023, a city of Davenport employee officially declared 324 Main Street a public hazard. The city did nothing and people died. That is felonious malfeasance. On March 13th, 2023, City of Davenport fire marshal cited numerous uncorrected fire safety issues at 324 Main Street. The city did nothing and people died. That is felonious malfeasance. The city placed over a dozen HUD Section 8 and veterans in need of housing assistance into 324 Main Street and paid the slumlord, Andrew Wald, thousands of dollars to house these people even though they knew the building to be unsafe. Some of these people died. That is felonious malfeasance. On May 27th, the Davenport Fire Department responded to a 911 call for 324 Main Street. The caller said, quote, bricks were bulging out of a large multi-story building. A Davenport Fire Department chief arrived on scene and then called a city employee, hung up the phone, turned to the 911 team on site and said, quote, this matter has already been addressed, and there was no further action needed. 24 hours later, that building collapsed, killing three and maiming a fourth. That is felonious malfeasance. There is no bigger issue before the city of Davenport than these lawsuits. Over the next two years, you will vote to spend tens of millions of dollars, and you will lose sight of the freight train that is coming down the track. That freight train will inevitably arrive and it will bankrupt this city. And you will forever be remembered as the city officials that were in charge when the city of Davenport went into receivership. It is still possible to do something, but you won't because it's easier to believe in the fantasy of qualified immunity than the reality of felonious malfeasance. I wish you all good luck, because we're all going to need it. Thank you. Anyone else? Ron Swinder, Davenport, Rock Island. I talk to people all the time. Why, why am I here? I am a voice. I am a citizen of this community. 
I want things better. Seven months, well, we turned it over. We had thousands of pages released. This person, that person, doesn't matter. What's gonna matter is, how do we save our city? We're in for a certain hurting, very much, no matter what we do. But I'd like to take a moment and welcome all the new council and the reelected mayor. Thank you for choosing to serve. Now, I speak, people don't listen sometimes. I don't really care. Why? Because my point gets spoken. Hundreds of people hear me. People talk to me. I've had meetings. I talk to people in this, you know, they're like family here. Why? Because I want to make a difference. We all want to make a difference. We want a better city. But we took $600,000 out of our general fund for the homeless and not our glorious destination park. Mm -hmm. It's amazing, you know. We as a city must reprioritize what we need to do. Dog catching, we can't afford it. You know, can we afford the increase? No, but excellent suggestions were made tonight. And I really appreciate that as a citizen, you know. But many meetings I've spoken to here have gotten cut short. You know, we as a people have a right to speak. Yes, I understand, don't need to interrupt, but we shouldn't cut off the people that take the time and sit here for hours and hours or even 20 minutes. Their voice needs to be heard. So when the next speaker speaks or the person after that or so on, let's use a common sense and remember this perspective. Because there is no privilege or immunity, only accountability. As we begin this new year, my hopes and prayers are for the community to help one another to reunite and heal as a whole community and get things done that need to be done. I will continue to speak here. I will continue to raise my questions. I will keep asking questions. For 10 years, I've asked how I can help. You know how many council people or anybody's approach me? No, I've asked. I'd be more than happy to, but evidently I'm not worth approaching or saying, hey, you know, do this or do that. Over 10 years, I've been speaking here since the death of my son. I just, unfortunately, 12, 12, 11 comes around every year. His death and what happened that night. And I feel for the death of the three and the mutilation of the other. I know what it's like to lose. And I don't like to lose. Especially when it's, pre it's preventable. We have to keep up our due diligence and keep remembering these are the people that elected you. It's not just your agenda or what you want. You have to listen to the people that elected you. That's why we vote. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? <sighs> Sorry for the Easter speech. We're back to those. Lashana Dixon, 7th Ward. I would like to start with my disgust of the City Council meeting on 1213, um, where I was looking forward to leaving things in 2023 so this city can start to move forward and we can finally get to a point where we can work together but that doesn't look like it's going to happen because 
us people feel like our First Amendment rights were taken away because the meeting was ended just because you didn't like somebody's, I can't even say opinions. They were speaking facts. I've never heard this person, Dr. Ezra Sidron, ever say anything wrong. He has done his studies. He has looked into almost everything. He has put his time and effort to figure out what is going on. And he has pulled out a lot. But just because you stopped the meeting because you do not want to hear what he has to say, I want to know what hurt was hurtful to your personal egos to stop this meeting. Was it, was it the rats in the night I think he used or Landon Waterman? Just to take away everybody else. There was like 15 people in here ready to speak. And that right was taken away from us because your personal ego? That's not fair to me, a citizen, or to anybody else. You took away my time to thank the people who were leaving out that have done a phenomenal job. Thank you, Ms. Um, Alder Alderwoman Lee for your time and your diligence getting and speaking to your community. She was the only one out here in front of City Hall with the people of Davenport and people that were out here hurting. You took away our time to thank her for her service. She was out here every day when she came back from, from out of town, every day. And you took away our time to thank her for her service. That wasn't fair. Speaking about 324 Main Street, it's been 221 days. That's seven months, 32 weeks, 5,300 hours of pain for families. We have not gotten any justice for what has happened. We've gotten so sad sorries, but we have no justice. Over clearly, with all the documentation ha has been found, where there has been things that have been done wrong. We, what is taking so long? What is taking so long? When you know you've done wrong, you say, I messed up, we've done wrong. There's nothing wrong with saying that. And I think it's just absolutely ridiculous. What, how much do we have to, what do we have to do? And I wanna just make a comment, what uh, one of my friends said, we, we, we stand up and, we, and we're gonna begin to step. No, we've been stepping. I don't know if she's still here, but we've been stepping. We're stepping just because the election may have not it went exactly how folks want it to. Oh, well, we're still stepping. We will continue to step. I also wanna thank you. I don't wanna call you out, but thank you for being nice and respectful of people. I really do appreciate it. But, and I also wish that you would teach some of your colleagues to speak with us respectfully. It doesn't take an interruption and all that. It doesn't take all that. We obviously know some people get off subject, but when you're passionate about something, that what happens. We always begin this meeting with respect and decorum, but when you interrupt and all the talking over each other, that's not respect or decorum. We live in Davenport. We need to work together. If we cannot get this, oh, in the next two years, we're going to find somebody to come and fix it. We, uh, the people who was running, oh, we were newcomers, but we're going to be really stepping next time. You thought we stepped before? We're going to really step next. Congratulations, Ms. Jade. Thank you. Anyone else? Sit, okay. Good evening, Jonathan Ewell, Davenport, Iowa. Uh, just like to say welcome and thank you for everyone for your public service. Really do appreciate it. A few months ago, my attorney from Wandro and Associates presented a demand letter to this city council. The demand letter was intended to protect the public from wrongdoing by city officials. Falsification of public data destruction of records, bribery, allowing contractors to sign the name 
for the building inspector. If it'll play. All of this is posted on Whistle Davenport. <clears throat> the demand letter, the depositions. says no work shall be covered unless signed below excuse me might sign that on your behalf is that accurate somebody else might sign that on your behalf is that accurate at times mm -hmm. if somebody else were to sign that sticker who would it be that would, would sign it on your behalf i would typically tell the contractor so why might that building inspector typically tell the contractor to sign his name? That same contractor accused the building inspector of accepting a bribe or a quid pro quo. When I addressed the building inspector, here's the verbiage or the conversation that occurred. Did you hear that? He said, I paid him. I'm not the one that paid him. I'll just rewind that real quick. I want you guys to be able to hear that. <laughs> I would encourage the city council the new city council to demand an audit. It appears that the city allowed a building inspector to complete inspections without having a certification or a license. Somewhere in the tune of approximately, I've been told $200 million worth of permits. How much are we going to allow bad actions of city employees affect the community? If an audit isn't completed and widespread corruption and fraud is found, could this cause external obsolescence? If two properties are standing next to each other and one was inspected by an inspector with a certification and one wasn't, which one do you want? I would want the house inspected by an inspector with a certification. So there's likely already a value impact. Now, how much is it? How widespread was this fraud? Please, please do an audit. Demand an audit of the building inspection department. Thank you. Thank you, anyone else? What kind of Dixon's award? Um, congratulations, everyone. You made it through, and you have a wonderful two years coming ahead of you. Um, and I really do hope that, but with all everything lined up, I, it's going to be hard for you guys because um, you're coming into something that some of y'all wasn't in seats when it happened. So I apologize for that. Um, but um, coming into those seats, I just hope that I, I, I love, there's not a lot of tension in the room and like in the past, I'm loving that so far. Um, and I hope that uh, the, the, the beginning of this new year that people learn how to respect other people's time and not be so sensitive. Because this is not a time to be sensitive. Them seats are not to be sensitive. That's why you wanted them. You got voted for them. So I'm not saying I'm going to be nice to y'all all two years. I'm not. <laughs> As you see today, I was like a $61,000 floor. <laughs> I'm going to question you, but please don't take it personal. Please don't take it personal. But there's going to be some times y'all don't like me. And I'm not going to like you. 
But if I see you in the grocery store, I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to say, how you doing? Because that's what kind of person I am. But congratulations. I hope that we have a good year of respect. And y'all, the other, the 10 aldermen, if y'all see something that is not going right, say something. Because I, how me, I know it has to be one of two of y'all that sat here and seen the last city council meeting and how it ended and not say that something was wrong. We were disrespected from somebody, especially some of that said they would not do it again. We don't do this for our good time and our good looks. I'm up here, I do this because I care about the community I live in. I'm a 33-year-old woman, and I'm telling you there's a lot of other things I'd rather be doing than being here with y'all. Mm -hmm. I could be cooking dinner, enjoying my family, working, doing my job, but instead I'm here because I want to see Davenport do better. There's always, there's been questions asked, when did you stop believing in Davenport? What do we love about Davenport? And that has been a shaky ground. But in the next two years, I hope that it gets better. Thank you. Thank you, anyone else? Uh, James Woods, 8th Ward. Getting to the new ones, congratulations. This really means nothing to you guys. About six weeks ago, I came and talked to the council um, on behalf of the Davenport North Little League. Uh, we received $100,000 in grants, and from our, few, from our past council, um, you guys exceeded expectations. We were hoping to maybe get five grand. Um, council, through the CISP program, donated $14,000. So leaving the Little League with only a deficit of like $16,000 to, to collect um, to be able to move forward with the lights for Ridgeview Park. So I want to say I appreciate that, and thank you guys, and I'll keep it nice this week. Thank you. Anyone else? Not seeing any? Okay. Jane Duex, Fifth Ward. Um, you know, I recently read... Uh, Two editorials. One, well, actually, I read this one a little while ago, right around Thanksgiving. Ed Tibbetts, um, esteemed uh, editorial, is from the Quad City Times and journalist, and now out on his own. The stench of Davenport City Hall, lucrative payout, and the cloak of secrecy was the title of his article in the Quad City Reader right after Thanksgiving, um, the, the, the December issue. And then the Des Moines Register um, had a, a similar piece um, that just came out uh, last week, I believe. Um, by a gentleman named Ryan Evans. He was a guest columnist, and it was actually published on, on New Year's Day in the Des Moines Register. All about, you know, our, our lucrative payout to, um, can we name names, Corey Spiegel? No, okay. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, you know, this. She's, she's the head. She's the head honcho. She was the head honcho, the city administrator. And my understanding, you know, that everything that took place in the city of Devonport was supposed to be oversaw by that city administrator or any city administrator, and, and in particular, sexual harassment training and, and, and making sure that, that no one's working in a hostile work environment. And I know that when I worked for, whether it was a corporation or a nonprofit or, or Blackhawk College, whatever it was, and I, you know, many things, every year we had to do our little computerized and watch the videos on, you know, sexual harassment in the workplace. And I just don't understand how for eight years, our city administrator allowed sexual harassment to be going on for her and how many other people under her. I don't understand. I don't get it. Can you, who can explain to me like I'm five? Because I don't get it. How you could reward the head honcho where the buck stops over a million dollars and health care for her and her loved one, whoever that person is, for a whole year. I don't get it. Please explain to me. Please help me understand that. And according to both of these, it's current. Well, obviously not the new people here, but current city council members and past city council members from the last eight years, Corey Spiegel, or excuse me, the people that were, I know, I'm, you're testing me. I'm testing you. Um, and, you know, the thing is, is that she, 
you know, and both these articles point out how when the building collapsed, and again, the buck was supposed to stop with the city administrator, people were calling for her resignation. They were calling for her resignation when the Hexco barriers fell down and our downtown flooded. You know, and why are we rewarding somebody who the citizens have asked for them to be terminated because they're not doing a great job? Not once, but twice and how many more times? And I'm really particularly concerned about sexual harassment in the workplace. Are we not doing that kind of training anymore with the city Davenport employees? I mean, is the EEOC and affirmative action really dead? You know, or, you know, sex, I mean, is sexual harassment training not a part of this entity's workplace training? You know, can we have a show of hands who's done it in the 10 years you've been here? How many times have you done it? You know, of course, I mean, the city administrator has, was that we just lost, was on the city administrator for how many years? And she endured sexual harassment for how many years? And she's the one that should make sure the human resource department is conducting sexual harassment training so it's not happening in the workplace. <clears throat> and I guess the other thing I want to say is, you know, we come up here, and I've come for years, and I was asked by somebody on the city council that they don't like people to come and talk at these means, and I acquiesced to that. You know, but it, it bothered me a lot because I can't have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with all 11 of you, you know, if, especially if I want you know, to inform the community of my thoughts and, and, and concerns about things. And, and, you know, I mean, you know, so, so I'm coming back. I'm back, you know, because it's not okay that I stop coming to meetings. But I've been coming to meetings for years, you know. Probably when I was eight years old with my dad, I was coming to meetings. But um, how do we get answers? We come up and we ask you guys things, and then nobody ever gets back to us. Like, my asking for a public apology from the alderman that humility made in me out in the hallway? I've never heard from him or anybody. You know, we, you know, we asked you guys to do things and nobody ever, you know, I'm, I, I posted this thing. I, I tagged a bunch of because, you know, social media is a thing that we're all on. And, you know, I, I'm sorry, I didn't know your name, the new eighth word alderman. So I couldn't tag you. But, um, you know, I, I went to that same homeless vigil at Zion Lutheran Church on, on December 21st. And so there you go. Anyway, Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Please come up. <laughs> Elsie Vasquez, third ward. So I would like to remind everybody here and everybody listening that here on the City of Davenport website that there is a button on the menu on the bottom, the very bottom, that says get involved. It is not a demand, it is not an order, it is a modest proposal. So please if you wish to get involved with your time, with your expertise, with your money, I implore you to do so. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, ladies and gentlemen, anyone else? Anything else, Ms. Mayor? Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion and second. All in favor to adjourn. Any opposed? Have a good weekend.